one of you guys this morning on this very hot day. We're thankful that we have our air conditioning running in here. Praise be to God, right? <laughs> um, it's just wonderful to have you guys all joining in the house of the Lord in worship this morning. And for those of you that are joining online, we're so glad that you decided to join us in worship um, through song, through praise, through scripture this morning. Stand with me, please, as we hear our call to worship, drawing us into this place of which God has brought us to. When we feel downhearted, Jesus says, rise. When we wonder if we can continue on this journey, Jesus says, I am with you. You have nothing to fear. When we are hungry and thirst in our souls for relief, Jesus says, come, follow me. Lord of hope and possibilities, be with us today. Open our hearts and feed us upon your healing word. Amen and amen. Stay and stay standing with us as we sing some choruses this morning.
Amo o Senhor, porque Ele ouviu a minha voz e a minha súplica, porque inclinou para mim os seus ouvidos, portanto, invocá-lo-ei enquanto viver. Cordeis da morte me cercaram e angústias do inferno se apoderaram de mim. Encontrei aperto e tristeza. Então, invoquei o nome do Senhor, dizendo, Ó oh Senhor, livra a minha alma. Piedoso é o Senhor e justo, o, o nosso Deus tem misericórdia. O Senhor guarda os simples e estava abatido, mas Ele me livrou. Volta, minha alma, a teu repouso, pois o Senhor te fez bem. Porque tu, Senhor, livraste a minha alma da morte, os meus olhos das lágrimas e os meus pés da queda. Andarei perante a face do Senhor, na terra dos viventes. Cri, por isso falei. Estive muito aflito. Eu dizia na minha precipitação, todo homem é mentira. Que darei eu ao Senhor por todos os benefícios que me tem feito? Tomarei o cálice da salvação e invocarei o nome do Senhor. Pegarei os meus votos ao Senhor agora na presença de todo o seu povo. Que Deus possa abençoar a palavra da sua vida. You may be seated. 
Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Amen? Amen. What a great promise we have. Just a couple of announcements. Um, uh, We have um, our adult Sunday school still on Zoom. Um, So if you want to participate that, we can send the link. Um, So sorry for the ones that didn't get it this morning. It got sent out a little late. Um, But that's continuing online on Zoom at um, 9.45 uh, every Sunday morning. Also, Tuesday night Bible study that's led by Julia is canceled. I know there's a board meeting going on, so uh, she has canceled it for this week. And then next week, it'll be in our backyard. So we've been in the book of Acts. It's been a a wonderful time of fellowship and digging into the early church. So if you are curious about what that's like, uh, come join us on, on, on Tuesday nights. Uh, Reverend Nogada has been leading a uh, Portuguese Bible study here in the sanctuary uh, on Wednesdays at 7. So if you want to join in the book of Revelations, you're like, what, what's going on, on in that book? That's so confusing. Uh, he can help kind of walk you through that. It's been a, a great time of fellowship for them. Um, so if you want to check that out, that's on Wednesday nights at 7. Um, the past two Fridays, we have youth group, uh, but they've been canceled because uh, we've been out of town. And then uh, ordination service this past Um, But we'll be back in in our backyard to have like a little bonfire uh, and time together this Friday night for our youth 6 to 12. So we encourage you, if you know any students, send them our way. It's a great time of fellowship, um, fun, and a a brief message. So we'd love to have more people come. Um, We've been continuing during this month of June uh, collecting an offering for the Reverend Eldo Silver Scholarship. Um, This scholarship supports seminary students in Cape Verde. Um, You have an option to either donate in person, you can drop it off in the box in the back and kind of put in the memo uh, for the scholarship, or you can do it online. There's a little drop down uh, tab and you can just scroll down to that and give online as well. Uh, We just want again to say thank you for your faithful giving online and in person. Um, You're continuing to bless the ministries of the church when you give faithfully. So we just want to say thank you um, for that. Last week, um, Mr. Jim kind of told, um, gave us the guidelines, our new guidelines uh, for COVID and what we have. So um, we we still ask that you call. You can call Monday through Friday uh, to the office, uh, Mr. Kell, or we'll put your name on the list. Um, We still have like a little bit of a cap of capacity of 50. Um, So we have plenty of space. So if you know people, um, ask them to to sign up because we'd love to see uh, more faces in the building. Um, We also have new mandates if you are vaccinated you no longer have to wear the mask um, in the building. So if you've been vaccinated, then you don't have to wear the mask. But if you are, have not been vaccinated or choose not to be vaccinated, um, that's okay. We just ask that you uh, wear the mask still. And we're still trying to keep this um, three feet social distancing. Um, but it's, again, it's been a blessing to be able to continue to, to worship with y'all. Um, and I'm just extremely blessed just from the, the support and love. And I think uh, Mr. Jim has another announcement for us this morning. Wow. As you all know, um, Pastor Chima, Pastor Julia, um, Julia received her, her credentials um, from the region. Pastor Chima has been made an elder, um, so we want to celebrate that. So in doing that, we're going to have a gathering next Saturday, June 12th, um, at the home of Jeannie Gomes. Um, we're going to celebrate with them from 12 to 3 p.m., so please bring a dish to share. Um, if you could um, contact Lisa, her phone number is 401-433-2142, just to let her know what you're bringing and if you're attending. Also, Rafina, um, her phone number is 401-644-6646. So make sure you don't tell Tima and Julia, we're going to try to do this as a surprise. Um, so there was no way to do that because of COVID and the, the, the way we're doing things. So. We just, we just want to be able to celebrate them with them. Gomes' address is 36 Harrison Ave, Warwick, Rhode Island. Don't be showing up Friday afternoon. She's not going to feed you. Well, she may. It's Jeannie. She may feed you. But sadly, from 12 to 3 p.m. All right? God bless you all.
you are able, I would like to invite you to stand up with me as we look up to the Father, we are here to worship your holy name. We thank you because you made all of our days but this one is special because we can gather together in your house, in your presence, and we can enjoy fellowship with one another, and we can worship you together. Thank you for giving us this day set aside for worship, set aside for us to read your word more than we do on a weekly basis, to come and to God's word. Father, thank you again. We thank you because you know how to make a way where there seems to be no way. And Lord, today, this season of life, our life and the life of our church, you know the struggles, you know the challenges. We are still waiting to have a shepherd, a shepherd to inspire and to instruct each one of us who you already chose. They may have the wisdom they, who you already chose. They may have the wisdom, they may be in tune with God's heart to bless this tribulation, illnesses, and we know that some of our own brothers and that you are God. We know that you can make a way where there seems to be no way. We know that you are our healer and you made our body and you can heal it for your glory. We confess that we do not know how to pray when we think about all the challenges we are facing right now. We do not know how to pray. We do not know what to say, what to ask. But we thank you for the promise that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Because the Holy Spirit understands our needs, our thoughts, our intentions. And Lord, so we bring the needs of our congregation to you. We bring our brother Bala to you asking that you may touch his body and soon he may be able to come home. We thank you for Donna Linda that are already enjoying her house, her home and her family. We praise you and we thank you for this blessing. Brother, brother David Ferreira is in our heart and we pray dear Lord for him today. Again we know what to ask. We know what our hearts want. But because we do not know how to pray, we bring him to you. And we pray, Lord, that in your great mercy, you may touch David. You may restore his life, his health. But above all, you may restore his faith. And you may give him a broken and contrite spirit today. That, as he look up to the doctors to give him hope, he may realize that the real hope is in God, and he may look up to the hills where our helps come from. And Father, bless Lottie and have the peace of God returns in God. You might be with the Ferreira family today, supply all. In the same predicament, we pray that you may be with him today. Lord, you have all the power in heaven and on earth. And this is the power that we invoke, that we pray for, to touch your servants. Continue to bless every church family. We have those who are not e able to be here, like our sister Maria and others. Lord, we pray that you may bless them. We pray for this country, for the leaders, that they may humble themselves before God and realize 
that uh, only God can give them wisdom to lead our nation. Father, as we come now to listen to your word, we pray that it's not the voice of our sister Julie we are going to listen to. We pray that you may anoint her. We pray that you may anoint our minds, our hearts. You may give us understanding that this not be just a routine. We are in church. It's our weekly routine, but this may be a special time for God to speak to each one of us. And I pray that as we hear your word, we may say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your This is not where I belong. So when the walls come crashing, falling down on me, and when I'm lost in the current of a raging sea, I have this blessed assurance holding me. All I know is that I'm not home yet. This is not where I belong. Take this world and give me Jesus. This is not where I belong. When the earth shakes, I want to be found in you. When the lights fade, I want to be found in you. These are lyrics from a popular song uh, by a Christian artist group called Building 429, and it was written in 2011. There's certainly been times in my own life where I find that I can fully relate to these lyrics. The walls, they're crashing down in me. I'm lost in this raging sea. I'm trying to grasp for some sort of semblance of assurance. There have been times when I'm watching myself from the outside, wondering, is this life really happening to me? Like, if I just try and wake myself up, shake myself out of this dream, It'll all just be something of the past, something that I dreamed of, not a reality. I've more than once wanted to run away from the stress and the trials of life, the experiences like being a brand new mom in those first couple of weeks, feeling so uncertain that I can even do this on my own. But there's absolutely no way that baby can go back where it came from, so I guess this is where we're at. Mm When trying to balance being a mom, a wife, a full-time employee, and finishing my master's degree, it seemed completely impossible. I wondered if I would ever emerge from this place so in over my head. Was I totally crazy in wanting to try and do all these things? Could I really balance all of these items, all of these things on my spinning plates? I've searched for answers when it comes why bad things happen to good people. When those that I've grown to have such a strong friend with have moved away, and I'm left with this big gaping hole in my heart, feeling lonely because I miss my Times of grief. Times of grief when we've lost people that we are so close to, and it's happened too soon when we are so unready to say goodbye. I think of how tomorrow will be the two-year anniversary of saying goodbye to Nanny, Chima's grandma, Debbie's mom. And we've been having these conversations regarding end of life and my own grandfather, who's 91 years old now. There are, I'm sure, a number of times that you've faced trials and tribulations yourself, times of sorrow, times of grief, times of uncertainty, questioning, where you don't really want to walk forward, but there's nowhere else to walk, right? We have to take the next step. We have to walk into the next day, even when you are so overwhelmed and all you want to do is cry out and say, Jesus, take me from this world and everything that I'm dealing with right now. But even amidst those heavy burdens that we go through sometimes, we know deep within our hearts that we have found this faithful Lord, this Savior, that we can say, God, help me. We have this hope and this security. We, as faithful followers, we can remain strong in the storm because we have a Savior. And we still question, to whom can we turn? To whom can we put in our trust and our strength? 
I'm here to remind you, in case you've forgotten, when we are in this world, we will face troubles. But take heart, for Jesus has overcome the world. The Apostle Paul, from whom, whose writings we will be looking at today, offers a very similar sentiment of hope for us as we recognize that we will face troubles. We will face heartaches, persecuted, persecution. We will be crushed and beaten down at times. But yet, we must always, always, always remember that we have hope. And that hope is found in Jesus Christ, the resurrected King, and through whom the work of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us can give us hope. Today, we'll focus on the recognition of the power of the Holy Spirit, God's presence among us, and secondly, what it offers to us if we would actually take hold of it. How often do you personally Do you notice the presence of the Lord with you, even now, as we sit in this sanctuary? Do you feel the closeness of God moving in and through your veins each day? Do you hear his quiet, gentle voice like the whisper or the soft breeze that flutters through the trees? A counselor once invited me to practice the presence of Jesus through imagery about praying through images as well. This idea where you close your eyes, and you can do it now with me. You close your eyes and you imagine the presence of Jesus with you. Where is he in this room? Is he sitting beside you? Is he in another pew? Is he across the room or on the platform? Do you feel his closeness? Is he looking at you, smiling? Is he seeking to draw closer to you? Where is he today? In moments that you need him, do you feel him holding your hand, reaching out to hug you, whispering, I am here. Take heart, I have overcome the world. Practicing this imagery for me has been incredibly As I recognize the work of the Holy Spirit in my life, it is so important to know that Christ Jesus is with me in my heart. He is not simply one that I believe in, but one who travels with me, who is so close to me, holding my hand, walking with me. Almost like that poem from uh, many years ago, uh, Footprints in the Sand. When it is that I walk through trials, we see one pair of footprints in the sand because it is then that Jesus carries me. When is it that you feel the presence of Christ Jesus, the work of the Holy Spirit in your heart closely when he carries you? We practice the presence of Christ with us in this place that we are now. It's incredibly powerful if you are just to take hold of it. I encourage you to continue to do that practice in your own life where you feel comfortable. Close your eyes. Picture Christ with you. Feel the presence of scripture today from Paul, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, as he speaks of the work of the Holy Spirit, 7. And we'll read to the end of the chapter. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. In jars of clay, to show that this all-surpassing power is from God, not from us. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always is at work in you. Amen. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe, and therefore we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus 
and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away. Yet inwardly, we are being renewed day by day, for our light and our momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. The word of the God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. So we recognize through this text and we recognize in our daily lives that we are so human. <laughs> we are immortal. Uh, we are mortal, rather. We have mortal and we will not last forever. Here, Paul makes the comparison between earthen vessels and treasure. Earthen vessels being clay pots, things that were made from dust and dirt and water. He makes note that our bodies are wasting away, just like the clay pot. But yet, at the same time, we are being renewed day by day. We are being made new day by day. This is a powerful image. As we think about the trials that we may face, the mental battles, the physical problems, the transitions of life that may make us feel so exhausted and uncertain about what step to take next. We, we have within us a treasure, a wisdom, a power that goes beyond anything that we can muster in and of ourselves. We have Christ Jesus and the power of his resurrection, the hope of eternal glory within us that helps us move forward. There are a number of you that I am aware of, and I'm sure a number of which I am not completely aware of, who have been through some trials these past couple of months. You have been beaten down. You have felt lost. You have felt tired. There's a number of you who have dealt with health concerns, big questions about the future, questions that need answers, questions that you need to seek for wisdom to answer. As a church, as a nation and as a globe, we too have been through a tough year and a half. We have been struck down. We've been hurt, crushed, perplexed, confused, and depressed. We need to pick up the pieces, answer questions like, what does church look like in the future? Will people come back into the church building like before? What does ministry look like? Who will be our pastor? Will she or he help us grow in numbers and more importantly, in depth and understanding? We have faced questions and the realities of what happens during the next holiday when my brother, my sister, my aunt or my mother or my grandparent is not sitting at that table during the holiday? We've had to ask questions and understand what comes next. We've had to grieve. We've had to seek wisdom, seek strength from God the Father. We have been people who have, as Paul writes, been crushed, perplexed, brought to despair, persecuted, and struck down, but, but not destroyed. I am here to remind you that just as much as all of these things have been going on in your life, and they are very real, very real feelings, we are not destroyed. We have overcome because Christ Jesus has overcome. We have this living hope that resides in our hearts. We have Christ Jesus we have the Holy Spirit living and moving in and through our veins that help us to carry forward. Within our mortal bodies, we are tired. We are weak. We are lost. We are confused, weary. But we have also within us this roaring lion, this mighty force of a power and wisdom that comes through God the Father. 
the momentary affliction, it is visible. It is real, but it lasts only for a brief time. With the extent of time from beginning to eternity, it is like the blink of an eye. Joy comes in the morning. Sorrow does not last always. The momentary affliction that happens to us, the circumstances that take place, for some of us going through uncertainty, sorrow, it may actually mean, and this is not for everyone, I will note, but for many, it may mean that you are actually living out the gospel, but it is a part of your life of faith. Paul has this abiding conviction that they, these afflictions that he goes through, these trials that he goes through, they are signposts for him of what is to come. He can get through this because Christ Jesus is within him. As he goes through these trials, it is just a way for him to show his faith. It is a way to show that it is not just simply him walking through life, but it is the power of Christ within him that allows him to walk through life. He claims in Romans 5 that not only so, but we also rejoice. We rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. And perseverance, character. And character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Sometimes, and not always, but sometimes, this is our truth, too. That we are living this life that we are called to. To shine the light of faithfulness to the hope of which we have to be able to share to others that need it. For Paul, it was in the times of his weakness that it showed his strength. Strength through the presence of the Almighty Father. It is through his fragile clay body that he had this treasure that he carried. It is through our fragile, broken, tired vessel of a body that we, too, carry this power, beauty, strength, and glory of Jesus' redemptive power. The Holy Spirit's protecting us. The Holy Spirit's perfection is within us. It is through our weakness and our honesty and humbling of ourselves and admitting that we cannot do this alone, it is then. It is then that the extraordinary power of Christ Jesus can be revealed and shown to us and to the world. It is not within our own power that we are able to make it through every day. Get yourself ready for church. Contrary to popular belief, it was not just you that decided to desiring to love. It is him who lives in you and draws you to this place. It is him who breathes a new sense of strength and ability to move on. It is through the work of the Holy Spirit that we are able to make it through each day. This is the work and the power of God in our lives. We may have thought that we've done this on our own, signed up to come on our own, but instead, it is God who continues to draw us into relationship and continues to give us power and ability each day. We must continue to humble ourselves in recognition of whom we belong and to who we live, whose we are. We know Paul, in the earliest part of his life, was not always known by Paul, right? He had another name. What was his name? Saul. He was known as they believed. But it was not until God got a hold of him, gripped him, made him blind, couldn't do anything by himself. From there, Paul lived, he joined them. He never saw himself above others. But it was on the outside that mattered but rather who was inside his heart. He went through a lot of effort to gain the trust of people because of his past reputation. He had to humble himself time and time again, serving and facing persecution himself both because of his past as well as because the fact that he claims Jesus Christ as his savior. He knew what treasure he held in his heart. He knew that that was what was most important. It was not the outward earthen vessel of a body that mattered, but rather what that vessel held. You'd pull out and, and shake out all the money. The only way that you could get the money inside was to take a hammer and smash it, right? And it would break into a million pieces. And then you wouldn't have the piggy bank 
Afterwards, you could only use it that one time. Fill it up and break it to get the money that's inside. It was important and useful for the time being as you collected coins and put dollars into it. But ultimately, we know that the piggy bank was fragile. It was breakable and disposable. But the treasure, the money that was saved up, is what matters. That would be useful to go on a vacation, to buy a new toy. The bank was just, we are fragile. We are that ceramic piggy bank that will break. Our value only comes through what we hold, what is held within us. Our value only comes when we carry Christ's power inside of us. We recognize that the time will come when we will be broken. We will be crushed, smashed into a million pieces. We will be perplexed. We will be confused and depressed. But all of that will be for the purpose and the sake of having Christ known and poured out unto all of those surrounding us. We will, the Christ Jesus will be poured out for the glory of the kingdom of God, and it will be used for the world. Our faith, what is inside of us, will be for the sake of others. Paul explains, in order that the power of God may be shown to be God's and not from us. The fragility of human vessels leads to the divine source of the power. And that, how do you see yourself? Do you see yourself simply as one that continues to push through just a little harder, one more step? I think I can make it one more day. Do you see the power only in and of yourself to be able to get through the trial that you're working through? Do you see the value in yourself and you alone? Or do you see yourself as a tool, as a vessel, as a way of showing the true power and strength and might of Christ Jesus within you? Do you recognize the value of Jesus Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit in and through you? Do you recognize the presence of the Holy Spirit in and through you? Are you allowing it to fill you completely today? Allowing it to renew you day by day? Because we are God's chosen vessels. There is no need to engage in these extraordinary actions, push forward with all we can just by ourselves to be able to prove our faith. Instead, we simply need to live our lives each day in a way that is loving and honoring to one another being faithful to the one that is living inside of us so that the power, the beauty, the value and love of Jesus Christ will be poured out for the sake of others. Paul remains faithful and speaks in prayer and thanksgiving to God who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead. He speaks within his own heart and now to those who read his letter because as with the psalm that was read earlier, Psalm 116, thank you, Eunice. As Psalm 116 was read earlier today, Paul also aims for that same result, that there are more people praising and recognizing the word of the living God through his actions, through his daily faith, through his walking life with the power of the Holy Spirit. He would rather more people praising God rather than praising him for strength he would rather his humility be seen so that one can see Christ Jesus all the more. Paul has taken on the whole Psalm 116 and has lived through its experience. He reflects deeply on it in the light of the gospel of Jesus, and it is now, he has now been made into an instrument as he appeals to the Corinthians not to tell those of his sufferings or to regard him as a failure, but rather to share the gratitude to God and turn the whole experience into praise of God. Psalm 116 says, I love the Lord, for he has heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, the Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the weary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return your rest, O oh my soul. Turn to rest, for the Lord has been good to you. Amen. 
during our times of doubt, questions, fear, sorrow, grief, persecution, trials, and tribulations. We are called to seek closeness to the source of which our power comes. We are called to seek the source within us. We are called to praise the one who is always drawing near to us and desire to keep peace, wisdom, love, and guidance from him. We are called to live a faithful life and to proclaim all the mercies and all the grace that has been bestowed upon us. For it is that way that the light may shine upon the world. It is that way that God's kingdom may be known to others. The trials and sorrows of which we face, they will not last forever. We have hope, right? Amen? We have hope. We have hope that is found within Jesus Christ, the resurrected King. That hope is found through the Father God Almighty who reigns forever and ever and is watching on his throne on high. Paul knew of trouble. He knew of the weight and the burdens carried in this life. He lived with hope, understanding that it was his strength that he had this life, but it was through the treasures and the riches and the power and the wisdom and glory that lived inside of him. The knowledge and the faith of the one who has overcome the world. It is through this spirit of faith, a trust in God's grace and promise that gives Paul hope, and it can give us hope today as well. All I know is I am not home yet. This is not where I belong. Take this world and give me Jesus. This is not where I belong. When the earth shakes, I want to be found in you. When the lights fade, I in you. Let me, let you, let us be seen as ones who hold the beauty and the riches of the living hope, Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit within us for all to see. Amen. We are uh, having the distinct privilege and honor. Um, I'm so excited. It has been so long. Um, we will be partaking in communion today, friends. Um, I'm going to invite Reverend Delgado up to administer the sacraments to us. Um, as a couple of words, uh, you'll be remaining seated. Uh, Reverend Delgado and Pastor Chima will go ahead and bring the elements to you. Our worship team will come up at this time as well um, and prepare a song for us. Is high. <laughs> Sorry, Julia. That's okay. When I prayed a few minutes ago, <clears throat> I knew that I was forgetting another prayer request, and that uh, that one is regarding our sister uh, Kathy Burgers this week, and. Um, she might be discharged from the hospital today. So let's remember to pray for her. Donna Linda is home and she spoke with her this morning. She sent her greetings and Lucy Ball as well. Thank the church for the prayers. And uh, this is a very special time for us. It has been a long time since we had communion on a Sunday morning. And even though it's not according to our regular traditional way, it's a great blessing as a family to come around the altar. So it's important to, for us to be reminded that it was our Lord Jesus Christ himself who ordained this holy sacrament. 
he commanded his disciples to partake of the bread and wine, emblems of his broken body and shed blood. This is his table. The feast is for his disciples. Let all those who have with true repentance forsaken their sins and have believed in Christ unto salvation. Those are invited to receive, to eat, and drink these elements. And we are told that this is for the comfort of our own soul. The church is our family, our spiritual family. The promises are from God. And we have promise of renewal for the blessed assurance of his presence with us is real. So today as we gather here in his name, we must do it with grateful heart. And as a pledge of this, his coming again. Seeing therefore what great benefits Christ has prepared for us in this sacrament, let us bow before God and ask that he would grant us, according to the riches of his grace, to be strengthened by might, with might, by his Holy Spirit we heard about this morning. To know the love of Christ and to be filled with all the fullness of God. Let us pray. Father, we are grateful because the promise says that the Holy Spirit will be with us, but also will be within us. Today, as we remember what Christ did for us, as we remember what Jesus, what kind of price he paid for our full salvation, I pray that you may give us all a humble, a contrite, a broken heart, recognizing that we do not deserve this great privilege. We do not deserve the blessing of salvation, but because it's the gift of God, we are here to receive everything you have prepared for us. We pray that you may bless the symbol of your body and the symbol of your blood that was broken and shed for us. And Lord, as we look up to you with of the atonement of Jesus Christ on our behalf, bless our fellowship, bless whatever, what we are going to do right now and help us to be filled with your holy presence in a very special way, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
When the hour came, Jesus and his disciples reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again, drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. It remembering what Jesus did for you. In the same way, after supper, supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. And Jesus said, Take it and drink it in remembrance of me. This is a special time. For us to remember the price Jesus paid for our salvation. Take and drink with grateful heart. Thank you for this sublime privilege that is ours to come and share the blood and the wine symbolizing your broken body and your shed blood for the forgiveness of our sins. We pray that you may bless each one in this congregation and those who are joining us in their own homes. Bless us all with your peace. We thank you, Lord, for sparing also, Kathy's life this week in that accident. And we pray that she may enjoy the benefits of the blood of Jesus shed for her and the benefits of the broken body of our Lord for her salvation. And today, we are also asked that this benefit may be extended to her body, heal her, and give her the peace of God that passes all understanding. Help us to go from this place Remembering that we do not deserve what we do, but we are grateful for the love of God because God loved us and gave his son to rescue us from sin and destruction. Continue to guide your church, your people. We pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.